Alrighty, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech Game. It was the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And we were looking at a video that the thumbnail, but generically it's usually the titles, but the thumbnail got my interest this time. And I already could tell what the video was going to be about. So the title will say it all. I've been a critic of this company critic of this product's handling and I was critic of how just this company operates in general in bad faith. So let's roll into it and see what this particular video is selling. I guess, I don't know. It's a four and a half minute video. So, you know, I got a lot to say on the, t the company in, in question though. So let's roll into it. See the Android smartphones and the iPhones, but this phone is different. This is a phone that has a very unique design, a different OS altogether, and this is supposed to be the most secure smartphone in the world. But there's a story to it. So this is a... So already you're overhyping it because... Uh, so yeah, cool. Android, non-Android phone. Awesome. Uh, it's still the Librick 5 to me. Those that don't know, this phone is going to be the Purism Librem 5, and it's many similar same iterations and absurdly stupid pricing of it that was kickstarted or put up for crowdfunding i'll be more accurate five years ago 2018 ish early late 2017 early 2018 still kind of maybe might ship eventually as a final product when they can figure out if you have to spend thirteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars on a phone so, yeah, uh, purism handling of this has been just god-awful. But I'll get into that. I want to see what Homeboy actually has to say before I just, you know, shit all over purism, which is pretty much what I'm going to be doing most of this video. This is a phone we ordered back in December 2019. And I remember even after weeks of ordering this, we did not get any shipping details. So we got in touch and the company told us that the device will be shipped after six months. Well, six months turned to four years. And after four years, this phone is finally here. I know four years is a long, long time, but even in 2023, this phone brings some incredible features and something makers should take inspiration from. See, the phone I'm talking about is the Purism Libre 5. And the first thing to notice here is that this is a big and bulky phone. I mean, it's crazy thick, as you can see, but there's a reason behind this. See, Overhyping a, at best, I'm going to say mid-range smartphone that runs on Fosh or Pure OS, whatever, the Fosh mobile UI thing that Pure has developed, quote unquote. Anyway, um, I'm not a fan. I'm not gonna claim to be a fan. Uh, as far as Homeboy here, he's overselling what it's gonna do. Uh, it's people that I directly know that have had these hands on. It literally, the three gigs of RAM and the just basic operation of the phone pegs the cpu um beta product at best there's this makes the steam deck on day one look like a finished fucking goddamn godsend you know at one point they had you couldn't even make phone calls like okay like th this is a company <laughs> fucking phone so in order for me to take this any bit seriously, I don't even know the fucking cameras that work anymore because like I, I've stopped following this because I just don't care anymore. Um, the, generically, what purism does is these are done in batches, quote unquote. So whatever currently they're at, I don't know, nor do I care. But it boils down to batch, certain batch numbers. I, I believe Evergreen was the one supposed to be the consumer ready version it, i could be wrong on that but the software on this is so not consumer ready um the the most secure phone there's been audits on it that make that are the, the most secure claims laughable so uh lewis rossman got one of the uh news <laughs> lewis rossman recently did a few videos on these guys and I'd call them a Ponzi scheme because they're like, give us money. And, we'll, you know, you'll get a product eventually, maybe, possibly. Um, the the whole deal is, is like, and then they're like, invest in us and all that. It's just, it's a, such a load of garbage nonsense. So 
the reason I am skeptical on these guys is how they are run as a business. They promise products, delay those products, never ship those products. I'll get into that later. And then they just simply never fulfill the, the hype. So what they'll do is, an example, like with the Vibram 5 here, there's been multiple delays on this. So like he said, oh, it'll take six months. Ended up four years before he got it. That's just saying. But what they would do is they would have bad news, but oh, we're launching a new product. It's such a bullshit strategy because it's like, and they oversell um, the, the realities of where they're at. And then they hire questionable people like Brian Munduke, you know, one shot as their PR guy. Uh, to anybody who doesn't know, you don't be the PR guy for pure reason while you're still writing for a publication that you're supposed to be the uh, something editor of. Just saying, and don't just dis- and you don't disclose that relationship until it's called out. So purism as a company, and with between the Lewis Rossman videos that are currently available, go watch them. They're really enlightening, and just purism's sketch history and scattershot approach to everything they do. Uh, they were supposed to launch originally their first laptops were supposed to be NVIDIA powered laptop, like GPU powered laptops instead of just Intel systems. Nope. Not even that. Okay. Whatever. They announced a two in one. Never saw the light of day on that. Uh, fan issues that they never fixed with the, I believe it was the second or third generation models. Um, the, the amount of money they're charging i believe for an i a ninth gen it's either on there i believe it might be on their server stuff is just absurd when you can go and you know go to a dell and get essentially the same damn thing with a linux distro for you know seven hundred dollars as opposed to i think it's three thousand i don't look at purism stuff because i don't want to give them traffic but here we are so uh yeah not 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 a fan uh, and the, the shadiness with this bullshit is like the, the, they announced a supply chain, like secure pl- supply chain stuff for the Libra 5, calling it the USA edition, essentially. And you charge $2,000 for it, yet half the phone is still made in, you know, other parts of the world. Anyway, enough ranting about purism. They suck as a company. Scam at, wor- <laughs> scam at best, Ponzi scheme at worst. Either way, scam. So the back here is actually removable, so the battery can be replaced, but that's not it. There's a smart card slot here, which is a PGP card slot. Now, PGP cards are cryptographic cards used as security keys like, say, Yubico, and there's more. Removing the other layer shows the modular Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, and also the modem card, which can be upgraded easily, just like in laptops. I mean, I've never seen this in a phone before. So basically, you can upgrade the things here to support the latest Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or modem standards, and that is pretty cool. The phone also has these three switches here. One is for cellular, one is for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and this one is for camera and mic. These are hardware kill switches, which means with a single flip, the camera stops working, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the mobile network is also cut. Now, this is a privacy feature, and I noticed that when all of the switches are off, lockdown mode is initialized, and that turns off all the sensors, including the ambient sensor and the proximity sensor. I mean, as you can see, the auto-rotate option turns to a manual option as soon as the switches go off. I know Android does. He's selling overhyping a feature that is available on a fucking two hundred dollar beta product phone, and I don't mean the Labrum Five. I'm talking about the uh, the Pine Phone. All that the shit he's talking about. Yeah, they're not easily accessible. You have to remove the back and you know flip a few pins. So is is the is the user convenience of a f- switch on the outside of the phone? worth you know um what 10 10 times markup i don't know about that to me eh, eh, i mean i'll probably go over the fucking pine phone honestly 
Honor does have a feature to run off the mic or the camera from the quick settings, but this is a hardware kill switch and that means not the OS and none of the apps can access any of these permissions. In fact, even to turn the phone on, you need to turn on these switches first and then you need to enter the disk decryption paraphrase and then unlock the phone. Even the software is different. This comes with pure OS, which is not Android. This is a Linux based OS and the software is very bare bones. But if you are paranoid about your privacy, you are going to like this. I mean, the app drawer is the home screen and when you open an app and go back to the app drawer, you see the app here and this is good for multitasking. All the apps that you open show up right here so you can switch between them. But yeah, it takes up a lot of space. And we also get the notification center and some quick settings with most of the options. Now, what's interesting here is that all of the apps here are open source, be it the phone app, the browser, the calendar app, the weather app. You also get apps like the text editor here and the terminal where all of the commands work, be it for creating a file, checking the IP address, checking the ping, the disk usage, the process is running. I also kind of like the usage app, which is like the task manager on this phone that shows you system usage, storage, and even thermals showing you real-time temperatures of the CPU and the GPU. Look, there are things to like about this phone, both on the hardware front and the software side, but this feels like a phone back from 2019 or in fact, even older. I mean, these are the specs of this phone. You get a 720p TFT screen, 3GB RAM, eMMC storage, a single camera on the back, but you know what? It's not about the specs. It's the fact that this phone isn't very usable. I mean, all the apps here are pretty basic with very limited functionality and they are slow to load, as you can see. Not just apps, all the actions you do on this phone just take an extra second. The camera is slow and pretty bad, as you can see. Important apps like Maps and Browser are laggy and the phone gets warm really quickly, even on basic usage. And finally, since it runs a Linux-based OS, the app availability isn't the best. There is a pure OS app store here, but that does not include any of the popular apps we all use in our daily lives. So this is supposed to be the most secure smart phone in the world. So I understand why Purism went for a Linux based OS, but there has been question marks around the privacy in this phone. And there have been reports of people wanting to cancel the order on this and not getting a refund. So yeah, this is not all ideal. See, to sum things up, the Purism Libre 5, aka the Linux phone, seems honestly too extreme even for people who want the absolute best privacy because you just lose out on a lot searching for the best privacy in the world. Having said that, this is a phone that can be an inspiration to others to bring a phone that's actually usable while bringing in strong privacy and security. I mean, some of the features here with the kill switches and user replaceable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards are actually impressive. Anyway, I want to know from you, do you want the privacy focused features on this phone on your Android smartphone or your iPhone? Make sure to comment down below and thanks for watching. So props to Homeboy for actually mentioning some of the problems. Um, I will give him credit for trying to find the positive. I've so skeptical of purism at this point where it's just like nothing they do can you know it's it's a scam it's a ponzi scheme to me that's just what it is but that's after years and years and years of seeing the same wash and repeat tactics as far as homeboys take on it it's pretty even I, I i'm not gonna slag on them too much but i will give them props for also mentioning that there is um shall we say problems not just with the phone but the company behind the phone so definitely props to that. As far as you know, purism, I would not even give them a half second look. The I'm not going to lie. Seeing Todd Weaver, who is the CEO of this company, run this company is like watching a retarded monkey try to fuck a coconut. And that's mean to the monkey, the retard and the coconut. Because at least those three things would know what the fuck they're doing. Todd, doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Um, I have no love loss for the person running the ship. I have sympathy for the people on the ship, the normal employees, but the idiot at the, the top of the card, it, it doesn't understand PR at all because perception is reality when it comes to PR. And the PR around your company, bruh, is that kind of shady at best. So... Honestly, if you're looking for a privacy focused phone that isn't going to cost you $2,000 or $1,500 or whatever fucking dumb markup they have now for price increases, yet yeah, you can go and buy a fucking Pine phone or get a, like a f Android phone with like EOS on it or uh, install Graphene OS if you want for $80 or, you know, if not cheaper. Or if you want user replaceable parts and repairable things, just go 
get a fair phone. <laughs> there are so many other better alternatives out there than the, this piece of shit that they're trying to pawn off as a phone. Like, I really would love a company with the ideals of purism, but better management. And it shows just in their execution, their delivery, and everything else. So, homeboy, I'll give you credit. You didn't uh, dick ride like a lot of people I was expecting out of this video. I, I have a pretty low view on people when it comes to these purism videos. Um, I will give you cre uh, credit for the more even approach that I'd be the first to tell you I couldn't do. So, props to you there. Other than that, I will reiterate again. Avoid purism like the fucking goddamn Black Death. Because it is the plague. <laughs> And they do not live up to their claims that they make ever. Their PR is overhype and under deliver. So I would say, you know, the typical LX experience. And if you're going to go this route, go get an Ubi, Ubi Ports phone, Graphene OS, whatever. Anything but this overpriced hunk of shit. So other than that, I'll catch you guys on the flip. Right, wrong, you guys know what to do. And you got a lot of Patreon, all that crap down below.